Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amora Love and today I'm going to show you guys what to do when you receive your Maven wigs. Now, it's going to come in this beautiful black satin bag. It's big enough for long wigs, curly wigs, deep wave wigs, whatever your fancy you have enough space to store this if you do not have a wig head stand. So it's going to come wrapped up in a net like so and inside it has cardboard and tissue paper I guess to hold the structure of the wig and transport you know so this is the density of the wig I'm not sure exactly um, how much it is but I will list the details below in the description box so inside the wig it's gonna come with two wig combs and adjustable straps to make your wig fit to your head and it comes with lots of lace space on the sides the front and the back this is a 360 frontal wig it's different from a frontal wig or a closure wig designed to help you put it in a ponytail and wear a few more styles the hairline does come a little plucked for you and slightly thinned out but we're going to take it to the next level further down the line in this video in the back and middle it comes with wefting it's very thin wefting so if you want to add more density to this wig i would suggest maybe maybe one more bundle if you want the wig to be more full but this is how the wig looks all the way around it does have a little wispy hairs for the back and sides and front of the wig and the adjustable band is really easy to adjust you can the adjustable band has a lot of options to fit your perfect head size if you don't want to sew on an elastic band this will definitely take the place of having to sew on an elastic band if you don't have extra materials with you now this is how thick the wig comes it's about a natural density i would say for someone who has hair this length but you can add another bundle if you'd like in the wefted area so here's how the ends come um i would definitely suggest a trim or adding in another bundle that's about the same length towards the bottom of the wefting but yes guys the hair does come with a lot of bounce and natural movement and natural luster so we're going to get started customizing this wig i like to turn the wig inside out and get those hairs out of the way and slide the wig forward onto the dome head just so that all those little wispy hairs are out of our way so i'm just smoothly sliding the wig up the dome head and then flipping it down so that it lays super flat along the dome head because you do not want this to be wrinkled or buckled see how this hair is left out we want to take the lace hold it with one hand and scoop it under and back so that it's out of our way from the hairline when we're applying the bleach this is just going to help so that you don't get too much bleach on it and now we're just going to pin it down with some t-pins if you guys don't have any of the supplies i'm mentioning in this video don't worry i will link them in a the description for you every little single thing you see in this video will be linked below so now that we have the wig attached to the wig head and it is smooth and tight so that there's no buckles or wrinkles we are now going to get started on bleaching so i'm using about one scoop of powder lightener and 30 volume developer using 30 volume is going to help you to move at a faster pace and i'm going to be using this color spatula you guys they do have color spatulas you do not have to use butter knives you can literally just use a spatula designed for what you want to do so you can still get the same effect as a butter knife however this is actually designed for mixing color and you can use it as a spatula to apply the lightener to the lace so we're going to smoothly apply the lace and in the middle of the lace i'm going to make sure to apply it a little bit more firm but i'm not going to press too much just because it's double tied to the lace in the middle behind the hairline so i want to make sure to press down a little bit firmer just so that the bleach can reach the other side of the knots and be able to process fully and not just on the bottom but also on the top so i'm just spreading the lightener all over the frontal all around the 360 degrees of the lace just the lace and this is about how much bleach i had left and you guys can use that to your discretion if you want to apply less when coloring a 360 frontal wig so this is how it looks super thick all the way around you want to make sure you thoroughly saturate all the lace super thick layer of bleach so i'm going to take the wig off and once these knots you see these little black dots on here 
Once they turn to like a pale orange or a pale yellow, depending on the client, that's when it will rinse. I'm sorry I don't have a processing time for you guys, but that's just what I look for. A pale yellow or a pale orange is the go-to color for rinsing out the bleach when it's done processing. Now you see how I have a little lightener on the edge, on the edges? We don't want that. And this happened when I pulled the wig off of the wig cap. A lot of the hairs got pushed onto the front hairline where I smeared more lightener in the front. So what I'm gonna do is take a wet rag and I'm just gonna wipe that off so that it doesn't process. But don't worry guys, I do have a tutorial coming up for you guys where I will show you how to fix over bleach knots just in case you did mess up because on this wig there was over bleach knots. So I figured I would get a tutorial out of it. Just make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for all of that information. I am going to rinse it off with the highest pressure my faucet can go to. You want to use a lot of pressure when rinsing out lightener from the lace because if you do not rinse this thoroughly there will be some white specks on the underside of your lace and once that product is wet again it will start to process more. So you want to make sure you rinse this out as thoroughly as possible. Now I would suggest some neutralizing shampoo after rinsing out the bleach however I didn't have any for the sake of this video so use neutralizing shampoo after rinsing. Now I'm taking shimmering light shampoo and I like to actually thoroughly saturate all the underneath side of the lace with a ton of purple shampoo like almost like I'm using this as hair color so I'm just applying so much making sure all the knots and all the lace is completely saturated with all this purple shampoo and I actually like to sit it in the sink to let it process for about 10 to 15 minutes and then I'll come back grab the wig and just run it slightly underwater as I'm lathering up the wig with the shampoo suds. I just go back and forth and make sure everything is completely lathered and rinsed all out. After that, I'm using my Aussie Moist conditioner and I'm just making sure to completely thoroughly saturate it with conditioner just to make sure everything is nice and soft when styling. Now that the knots are bleached, we're gonna move on to plucking the hairline. This is how the hairline comes when you do receive the wig. So if you'd like, you can leave it here but we're gonna pluck it a lot more to give a more natural scalp like human hair appearance I'm using these Revlon tweezers that I've had for a few years and they still have just as much grip as when I first got them. So I would highly recommend it. It's definitely worth the extra coin. So my favorite thing to do when plucking the hair out from the lace is to put my fingers underneath the lace. This is gonna help you to really see what you're plucking and really visualize what the frontal is gonna look like on skin or the bald cap method. So putting my fingers underneath is a lifesaver. I'm basically using my pinky nail and the tweezers to pluck sporadically. This is real time that you're watching and this is how fast I'm actually moving. I just want to show you guys in real time motion what it looks like when I am plucking the hairs from the lace. So I'm just going to continue to do this and my main target for when I first start plucking is all the missed bleach knots. So anything that's still black and anything that's super blonde or any gray hairs that you might see. I always go for those first when I'm looking at what to pluck along the hairline. Anything black, anything blonde, and anything over bleached is your general rule of thumb while also breaking up that hairline to make it look more natural. And be sure to comb away the excess just so that you can see what you've already done and your progress so far. It's very good to visualize what you're doing so that you're not over plucking in one area or not plucking enough because that hair is not combed out the way and you can't visually see the progress you've had so far. There's this thing that frontals do. They come with this super harsh line. So what I like to do is carve out a section of the near hairline and we're just gonna break that up with the tweezers, making sure that we're grabbing the hair from the root, the very base of where that hair is attached. If you're not grabbing at the base, you're just going to break the hair off and that knot is still gonna be in place. So it's gonna look like you didn't really pluck the hairline. So make sure you're grabbing every single strand from the base of where it's tied so it completely comes off the lace. So now that I'm done breaking up the hairline, another thing that I like to do is called cross-checking your work, boo. So what I like to do is make horizontal sections throughout the entire frontal and just see if the density looks the same. If it doesn't look the same, like here, I like to go in 
and just pluck it a little bit more comb that out and see what the density is looking like if it's a nice smooth blend then i move on to the next section like so and you just want to do that and cross check your work just to make sure because you never know where you're going to want to change up your part so you really want to cross check along the entire frontal to make sure that you're giving scalpy anna and real life human scalp all the way throughout your wig no matter where you decide to put your part okay so i'm just going to continue this entire process and make sure that we're really giving human scalp all the way throughout this wig we don't want to look like a doll head we don't want to look like a mannequin we want to give real hand and scalp throughout the whole entire process so now that i'm at the middle part i do it a little bit different i keep it in the middle part and i pluck underneath and around the middle part i don't necessarily pluck a parting in because it is lace you don't need to pluck a part <laughs> But that's, you know, whatever you want to do, boo. You don't have to pluck a part. You just need to make sure the part is straight so that it's given scalp. So I like to pluck around the middle part just to give that kind of natural widow's peak that we have in our natural scalps. Because our hair in the middle is naturally fuller than our hair on the sides. So I don't like to pluck too much in the front along the middle top portion of the forehead just because naturally a lot of us have more dense hair near that area so now that we're done plucking i'm just going to apply my favorite mousse ever this mousse is the nairobi foaming mousse if you do not have it at your local beauty supply store i will link it below for you on amazon it is amazing it does not flake and it lays down your hair exactly how you lay it so i'm just going to carve out a section along the hairline to use as our baby hairs and I'm taking my razor comb that I will link below for you guys in the description box. I just razor off the hairs in a jagged motion so it's not a blunt cut along the hairline. Then I'm just swooping the hairs into place using the mousse and my carbon comb. This comb is for cutting. It's also a heat resistant comb so that it doesn't melt when you're flat ironing and doing the comb chase method. Now you guys see that line? I don't like that. It's never too late to keep plucking. If you see something that needs to be plucked, go ahead and do it. Don't be afraid to go back in with those tweezers after you've initially plucked the hairline because as you style this wig and as you apply this wig onto your head, you will find that you still will need to pluck here and there. So don't be afraid to grab those tweezers throughout the whole entire process. See that line? So I'm just gonna even go back again and thin out that line and break it up so it gives a more natural diffuse hairline instead of a straight across doll head hairline. Now just taking my razor comb again, I'm holding the hairs and going down in a jagged motion just to give those hairs a more wispy look instead of a blunt cut straight across. Then applying some of my Nairobi foaming mousse again and combing the hairs in place with my carbon comb. Once we're all done combing those baby hairs in place, what I like to do is use a Senex strip, a thick black Senex strip. These ones are super sturdy and they do not break when you stretch them and they are very strong still when wet. Tie it in a knot two times in the back and I'm going to place my doll head under the dryer to completely dry all this mousse and set it in place. Now that the mousse is completely dry, I'm removing the Sanex strip and this is what is given. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So when you put it in a ponytail, this is how it looks all the way around without plucking any of the back with the weft area in the back. So now that everything is completely dry, I'm going to take my comb and just comb out this crusted hard cast and give it a more softer, natural appearance. When you comb out the foamy mousse and everything's set in place and dried, it looks a lot more better once you comb it out. Now this is why I love the Nairobi foamy mousse because it's a flexible hold mousse, you guys. There's a difference between some mousses and I found that out the hard way. Some mousses, after you set them and dried and it's completely dried, it'll start crusting up on you when you comb it out and um, that's not what you want. So if you can't get a hold of the Nairobi foamy mousse, or for some reason it's sold out, just make sure you grab a flexible hold foamy mousse so that you can still maneuver the hair after everything is set in place. That way you'll get a natural luster over the hair and you can still maneuver it while it's still being tamed and laid in the position that you initially put it in. 
So I'm just combing out that hard cast and combing the hairs into place to give a more softer appearance. And as you can see, that mousse really held everything down, everything in place. I can still touch the hair and place it where I wanted to place it. And that purple shampoo gave us a more natural, neutral scalp appearance so that it's not super orange and brassy and warm. So this is just me combing through the scalp so you can see how neutralized it looks, how non-warm it looks now. Now I'm just going to go through and flat iron the wig. I'm just doing two passes on each section and then going over the entire section with the comb and doing a couple passes just to mesh everything together. But you guys know how to flat iron a wig. Normally I like to use hairspray. However, I wanted to see what this hair was straightened like with zero product. This is no product whatsoever. The only thing that's on this hair is the Nairobi Foamy Mousse at the top near the frontal and everything else is the hair completely bare. No product, no nothing. I just wanted to see what it looked like. But you guys know on my channel, I love to flat iron hair with Tresemme Flexible Hold Hairspray or any flexible hold spray. So as you can see, the hair still has lots of body and lots of shine without any product. And that is beautiful to know. So just in case you don't have product or you ran out or you can't get your hands on any, you can still flat iron your hair and get a nice, beautiful, movable hairstyle. Yes. So this is what everything looks like. This is half done and it's natural state. And I'm just doing a couple passes all together all over the hair. And this is basically the finished look. Later on in this video, I'm just gonna apply some mousse. But if you want, you can continue to watch me style and play with the hair. Get into it. Look at all this body, all this shake with zero product. So like I said, this is the ends of the wig. If you did want to add another bundle, I would highly suggest doing it at the base of the wefted area. Um, the back is not customized or put into a ponytail, but if you wanna do that, you could do that. I'm just not doing that because this wig is for sale, boo. So if you want it, let me know and I'll send it to you. It don't matter where you are on this planet. I'll just send it to you. Let me know if you want it. This wig retails for $2.90 on the Maven website. It is straight Maven 360 wig. I believe it's 22 or 24 inches. Either way, it's $2.90 at the highest length. So if you want this wig, it is for sale for $300. So that means basically you got this whole customization for free. So let me know. And I appreciate you guys so much for making it to the end of this video. I really appreciate you for watching my tutorials. If you like me and you like what you saw and you like my personality, then please go ahead and subscribe and stay tuned for a bunch more videos. I do post often on this channel. So go ahead and subscribe if you saw what you like and take a look at some other videos. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.